Hey, my name's Aaron. I'm a second year PhD student at University of Dundee. Um, I was recently asked by a couple of friends um, about advice and tips and hints on applying for a PhD and, and things to do, etc. like that. Um, so I thought, let's uh, put up a video. And so just to give a bit of background, I'm a second year PhD student at Dundee University. Um, I was interviewed and successfully got my PhD position um, in 2013. Um, at the time, it was the only project in the country that I was looking at qualitative methods and social psychology. So um, I was very fortunate enough to be on this programme today. First things first, really, if you're watching this and you're considering a research PhD, then that's great. So great that you're even considering it because PhDs really open up doors and you're doing really, you can, if, if you've got the right project for you, you can be doing really exciting research. One of the issues that has come up, obviously, funding is becoming a lot more competitive and scarce. And my, my first advice, if you're really passionate about research, then just keep digging for the project that's right for you. And the one that you feel you commit to for at least three years. Until then, I would recommend the two top sites that I think are probably the most convenient to be using are um, www.jobs.ac.uk and www.findaphd.com. I found mine PhD on findaphd.com and both both are very good sites. And you'll, you'll find a lot of the studentships are kind of posted on both of those, but it's worth keeping an eye on both anyway. Just to give you an idea though of the application process, there are two avenues to applying for a PhD that I am aware of. Um, the first is that the first avenue is that a university itself will be allocated funding from a granting body, so they will be given a pot of money, and those will be put towards would be known as studentships. What would happen is the university will advertise, saying we've got money for a PhD studentship. Do a list of our research areas. Give us a call or contact us and we'll have a project and putting a proposal together. So what usually happens then, you, this is the route you take, then you express interest to a potential supervisor, you put in a research proposal, an application as part of, you know, an application to, for that money and to do a PhD, um, which will usually be around three years, three to four years at most. And the timing may vary, but it depends on the university and how they use the funding. It's kind of the general usual process. I tend to find you need to pick a supervisor that you know, you probably know, which usually helps. Also, you need to be very kind of clear in kind of the research that you want to do. If you are putting together an application for this particular type of avenue, the key things that you need to be thinking about are originality, uh, what the current literature says out there at the moment in terms of building a rationale for your work. You also need to be, you know, build a really good relationship with your supervisor and also show them that you are very keen to do a PhD. Um, and that you will complete because attrition at the moment from what, from what I've heard is quite a big thing especially when it comes to higher degrees as well. The second avenue is an advertised studentship and that's the route that I've gone down or that I went down for my PhD program. A supervisor at a university will have had a project proposal put together and sent and submitted to a granting body. See, that will then be either approved or rejected by the granting body and then what happens is that studentship or project gets advertised like a research job um, on the you know one of those sites like jobs.ac.uk or findaphd.com. What usually happens is the, the, the project gets advertised, you as the potential candidate or student for that project will have a look, send in an application, you'll send in your CV, write a cover letter or write an application if there needs to be one. And you'll have, if you're shortlisted you'll have an interview and then you'll receive a decision letter whether or not you've got it. This route is also just as rigorous and it can be just as competitive. When I did some of the things to prepare for, if you are going to go down this studentship route, uh, which is what I went down, is make sure you know what the project is about. Search. If there's references on the job description, look them up and go beyond those references. Prove that you know, you know you've got a grasp on what's going on. Definitely know your supervisors and the interview panel. Uh, make sure you've done your research on them, where they've been, what are their research projects, what are their research interests, and try and align your kind of answers to them as well. Thirdly, you want to be looking at the centre and the university in overall and make sure it's the right kind of institution for you. At postgraduate level, you'll find that there are centres in universities that may not be well ranked, 
but are still world class renowned. It's worth checking out the centre first and then the university because at postgraduate level it's a little bit more, it's not as clear cut as when you're doing your undergrad. Uh, the rankings aren't so kind of, are a bit more grey, I think. But in terms of, I mean, from my experience and, and what I went through, when I did this application for my PhD programme, I had to give a cover letter and a CV. I invited for an interview, which is probably one of the toughest interviews I've had. I was asked to uh, do a 15 minute, well, 15 minute presentation with questions and answers for five minutes to the members and other research students at the centre. Um, I was then asked to do a half an hour exam and to analyse two, two transcripts, two kind of informal interviews, and I'll come back to this in a moment, two informal interviews with two other research students in the centre. Um, and then I had, an, a, I think, an hour and a half interview with a panel of four members um, who, were the scene, who were the three supervisors of the project and uh, one of the directors of the centre as well. Um, my interview process was very rigorous. It happened over around four to five hours. It was very, very long, but fortunately it paid off and I managed, I was successful. So, um, but I, I was very prepared and, you know, I'd, I'd spent a lot of time practising what I was going to say in the interview as well. Um, so a lot of it's preparation and confidence. And um, So uh, one of the things I mentioned just briefly ago was about uh, informal interviews. Um, during my interview process, I had a informal chat with two of the other research students. Um, don't be deceived by the use of the word informal. You're still being interviewed. Whatever they see is going to be fed back to the interview panel. So when they say informal, it doesn't mean go and have a chat with them about how awful things are. You need to keep selling yourself. You need to be engaging with them and showing that you're interested. Uh, usually when they say informal chats, what they mean is they want to know if you can get along with other people in the centre. Because uh, that's also, you know, when you're spending three years in one place, you need to also try and be able to work in a team environment. So that's also very important. So in terms of the tips and hints, I've got six magic tips and hints for you guys. The first, which I kind of talked over briefly, is do your research on the project or field that you're applying or interest, applying to or interested in. Your supervisors need to be confident that you can show initiative and you are interested in the research. You may not realise this, but supervisors can quickly tell whether or not you are someone that is worth investing in for three years. They can use, you can usually get that first impression very quickly as well. So make sure you know what you're talking about. Make sure you're engaged with the material. Make sure you're engaged with the project and the people who are behind the project. And research, and another thing I mentioned, research the supervisor. And this isn't just important from an interview perspective in terms of selling yourself, but you'll be working with your supervisor for you know for at least three years. They're the ones that are going to help you mentor and guide you through your PhD project. So just try and gauge whether or not you could get on with them. If you know anyone at the university that you're applying to, that may have come across them, ask them and say, look, what's this person like? Have you heard anything? Have you had any experiences with them? I'm just trying to get an idea of whether or not we work together. Sometimes you can even email the the people who have put the posting up. So I'm not saying you're going to get along with your supervisor all the time. There's going to be bumps in the road where, you know, you don't always agree on stuff. At least if you try to engage with you, you get whether or not you're on the same page at least. It usually gives you a good idea. It will make your life a lot easier as well. If you're not sure about something, just call them. I mean, these supervisors want people to come and contact with them and talk to them about project ideas. In terms of finances, and if you're fortunate enough to be fully funded, and uh, in my opinion, I think fully funded PhDs, you, you tend to get more out of because you're usually part of another community as well, in terms of training as well, which is, which is usually quite good. Uh, do you, if you're funded PhD, then you're looking at a student stipend of thirteen to fifteen thousand pounds per annum between year one and three. I'm unaware of any other higher funders except for people like the British Heart Foundation. Tend to only fund medical research. What I understand, anyway, I could be wrong, but that's from what I know. The, the stipend is usually tax free, so it's scholarship funding. It's like a bursary, so generally speaking, won't be taxed on it. Usually if you're fully funded, you'll also have your tuition fees paid for and you'll, sometimes, if you're lucky enough, you'll also have research expenses to cover. If you're laboratory based, then you'll have lab expenses as well. But usually speaking, if you're fully funded PhD, these will be costed up within the 
grants. Another thing on top of financial perspective, it's also worth um, finding out if the university or centre you're applying to has part-time teaching opportunities um, to kind of top up your stipend, especially if you're living in big cities, it's more expensive. So it's worth asking if, or if there's any other cheater positions or things like that that you can help out with to get some extra cash as well. And also you can build up some teaching experience which is also um, helpful for the future for your future career as well. So I said as also, we sent research the centre, lab or division. Uh, there's no league tables for PhD programmes. They have student support or student satisfaction surveys, but generally speaking, obviously PhDs are very niche, so they, you can't really rank centres of research at the moment. It's not a very clear cut, so to speak. It's always worth checking out the centre, see if you know anyone that knows of the centre, if they can give you some feedback on it, give you an idea of what it's like. Those are quite kind of helpful things to be looking at as well. And finally, you might, when you're looking for PhD programmes, you might see things like a 3 plus 1 or a 3 or a 4, etc. Like that. Don't be too put off by that. Basically, all it means is when a PhD is 3 plus 1, what they're saying is a one year master's plus three years PhD, so it's a four year programme. From what I understand, those programmes are much less, aren't have really um, happening as often now. So it's usually just three years of funding and people are usually expect to have a master's or it's desirable for a student, a candidate to have a master's before they come into a PhD programme. That also varies, but generally speaking, that a master's will help you. And so those are the kind of six points. So just to recap, really. So the first was research the project, research the supervisor, talk to the contact on the job advert or the research stu the studentship advert or the uh, university. You'll check out your funding as well, see what it covers. Research the centre, research the lab and make sure you know what the programme consists of, the PhD programme, and also check whether or not there is teaching opportunities as well within that. It's, that's kind of my kind of quick 15 minutes uh, cap on and applying for a PhD and hopefully you'll, you know, that, that gives you an idea of at least where to start anyway. If you do go on to apply for, apply for a PhD, then best of luck to you. I, I really hope it all goes well for you. Um, if you've got any questions, leave some comments below. I'm happy to answer anything. Thanks very much.